You're listening to the Diet Rebel Podcast with Kiki Smith. If you're a woman who hates the idea of having to choose between loving your body and changing it, then you are a Diet Rebel and this podcast is for you. In this podcast, we talk about everything from loving your body exactly as it is now to becoming the most fit, lean, and toned you've ever been, no matter how old you are how many tiny humans you've birthed, or how many times you've lost and regained the same 15 or 50 pounds. Seriously, you don't wanna miss it. So grab a snack, preferably protein-based, and sit back and enjoy this episode. What I'm talking about today is low carb versus low fat, how to determine which one is best for you, and like, why do you even have to choose in the first place? I don't know, do you have to? We'll talk about that. So uh, first, and foremost, why do you have to choose? <laughs> so let's just get that out of the way. So like I said in the description for this, like low carb today is what low fat was in the 90s. You know, we just kind of, we keep resurrecting a lot of the same diets over and over. And low carb has come in so many variations from Atkins to now keto, you know, so there's different ranges of what people consider low carb. So it goes from no carb to low carb anywhere within that. And a lot of people are wondering, is that a route that they should take? And, you know, so I wanted to bring this discussion. I know I've done topics before talking about low carb, but I wanted to bring it up while talking about low fat. So the reason why I'm saying that you have to choose or the reason why you would even want to bring this up in the first place is first, we want to discuss the fact that weight loss is determined by a caloric deficit period. So that's why either one of them are pretty valid for weight loss because if you reduce a macro in any way, it's going to naturally lower your calories, which is going to help you to lose weight. So uh, actually losing weight is gonna be determined by lowering your calories. The type of weight that you lose, so fat loss versus just losing anything, bone mass, muscle mass, organ mass, you know, chopping off a ponytail or a limb, those are going to be two different things. So losing weight, just you can lower your calories, you will lose weight. That's what most of us are familiar with. The type of weight that you're losing is determined by the type of calories that are eaten within that deficit. So a lot of times we talk about calories in versus calories out. Did a whole video about that uh, that we rewatched a couple of weeks ago. So you guys can go back and I can link to that if that's something that you want to dive deeper into. But that's the basis of that is losing weight is determined by lowering your calories. The type of weight that you lose is determined by how you're eating within that calories. But so your macronutrients, your protein, your carbs and your fat. So what I'm saying, why do you have to choose? Because I feel that we need to first understand that it's not just about the calorie reduction, as we talked about in the previous video, it's about spreading those calories out in a way that you lose fat instead of just losing weight because you don't want to lose muscle mass because that's where your metabolism comes from. So when we're looking at those three, protein, carbs, and fat, protein is not negotiable. So if you're looking to lose fat, your protein is non-negotiable. So that's why I'm just taking it off the table as far as this discussion goes. If you want to go ahead and lower your protein in order to reduce your calories, that's fine. But that's what the typical just low calorie debate does. So that's why we're not talking about just low calorie versus low fat versus low carb. We're just talking about low carb versus low fat because they're both a reduction of calories in general. So in order to keep your metabolism high and not lose muscle mass, Remember, muscle equals metabolism. Your protein should be a non-negotiable. So when you're deciding, start there. When you're figuring out like, okay, I want to lose some fat. I'm going to lower my calories. You're not touching that protein because protein needs, if anything, increase when you reduce calories. They don't decrease. So no matter what phase you're in, your protein should pretty much either stay the same or go up. There's not really a reason that it should go down. So unless you are under strict doctor's orders because you are suffering from like liver or kidney disorders that affect your protein metabolism in some way like the way that your body digests protein take protein off of the calorie lowering chopping block so your calorie leverage when you are looking to reduce one or the other is going to be found in your carbs or in your fat so now that that disclaimer is off the table let's talk fat or carbs so 
your if your calorie reduction is coming from either your fat or your carbs or maybe a very strategic mixture of both that is going to be ideal for fat loss so the main thing to remember before we even begin the discussion is that neither one of them are magical there's nothing magical about reducing fat there's nothing magical about reducing carbs don't believe the hype the fitness industry thrives on extremes so typically it's going to bash one and make the other like you know the king for that specific trend so typically that's what you're going to notice most successful diets are typically reducing one or the other in some really strategic way sometimes it's just a strategic reduction of calories which is the baseline the basis for all of it so neither one is magical carbs or fat neither one really actually needs to be extreme so like i said if something is demonizing one or making the other like angelic then typically it's probably off balance neither one actually needs to be extreme but you can and should feel free to tilt the scales to make it sustainable for you based on your personal preference so the key is your sustainability and the personal preference so a lot of times those are the things that i say and people say like do i need to lower my carbs or are my fats too high they plug in their macros and they're like my fat's always over the top and i'm just saying like it's just really based on personal preference your fat or your carbs so you want to lower your calories lower fat or lower carbs um if you want to choose which one you're going to choose based on sustainability and personal preference for you so basically i just want to share two ways for you to understand what that means for you so just two super quick ways to determine your individual sustainability and preference uh whether you're choosing for yourself or if you're a trainer trying to help a client to decide which one to choose because trainers is something to know like don't just pick one and ride that off into the sunset and think that all of your clients need to reduce the same macro it's going to be different get to know your client and you'll be able to help them a lot more so the first one is going to be taste preference which is i think obvious but most people don't realize that macros are often combined so they may not always recognize their taste preference so take a minute to recognize what yours is so that's going to be the most obvious is which mouthfeel do you like most people have a specific mouthfeel that they like better either carbs or fat uh ask yourself if you like things like creamier like if you uh get a salad do you prefer ranch dressing or do you mind having an oil and vinegar like is that a substitution that you can make or is that like no that just totally made the salad disgusting or like dipping sauces do you like something creamy or do you like something that's maybe more like sugar based so like a like barbecue and sweet and sour type sauce for like if you have like chicken nuggets for instance versus like a ranch or maybe a honey mustard or something like that that's usually letting you know creamy your mouthfeel means that you probably uh prefer fatty and a sweeter mouth is to, typically means that you want more carbs so start paying attention to some of the stuff that you're eating to understand because like i say a lot of times they're combined so if your protein is combined with fat, you may not realize that you prefer fat. You, If you're somebody that's okay with leaner proteins, then maybe fat is not a big deal for you. If you like a lean cut of steak versus a marble cut of steak. If you don't mind chicken breasts over chicken like thighs or legs or something like that, then maybe you prefer something. You don't mind reducing your fat a little bit more. That's where you can take the cuts out for you. So just some examples to kind of help you work through that is start paying attention to the cuts of meat that you like the type of sauces that you like the type of side dishes that you like like are you are you the type of person that's like yeah i can substitute a salad for a baked potato or vegetables for a baked potato or are you like no i gotta have my baked potato and when you have that baked potato what are the types of things that you're putting on it so just start paying attention to if you tend to lean more one way or the other and if nothing else you can go to like my fitness pal or something punch in your macros and see if there's one that you're always over on that is probably the biggest clue if you just type in the way that you eat without trying to maneuver anything see if there's one that you're over on if you're over in carbs and fat then maybe you need to think of strategically lowering both but that's the first thing is to just kind of look at your uh, taste preference so rachel said chicken thighs for the life now Rachel, that is a perfect example. I'm glad you punched that in because like I am totally a white meat person. <laughs> I am a white meat person through and through. Like I can do chicken. I can do like lighter fishes. I don't even like fattier cuts of fish. Like it's, it's almost harder for me to eat good fats because I'm not a total fat person. So 
And I'm gonna tell you a little bit more about what I do, but I wanted to try to give you guys some examples of how to use it for you. So I'm glad that you shared that, Rachel, because that could help you to understand which is best for you. So taste preference is the first one. And now your second one that you would use, because these two work together, is your caloric deficit preference because this matters as well so you may find that maybe you're a you know a person that likes fatty foods but you also like to like eat a lot of food you like to have more meals throughout the day so what i mean by this is that the reason why the low fat craze worked so well back in the day was because it was a super easy way to lower calories lowering carbs lowers your calories but lowering fat lowers them fast because fat has twice as many calories as your protein or your carbs so when you reduce your fat like it drastically lowers your calories that's why it like worked and everybody jumped on that bandwagon so what they did was a lot of times they lowered the fat and something and just increased the carbs in it or things had more sugar so that was the problem with the low fat craze was that typically we added a bunch of other stuff to make it taste better so things that were super low in fat or super high in carbs because it had to taste good somehow you know usually those are the two things that make something taste better is the carbs and fat so uh, lowering fat lowers your calories like a lot because it has so many more calories in it so like you know like a couple tablespoons of oil has as much you know calories as like a whole chicken breast or like a potato or something like that so it's really important to see if you eat really high fat you'll notice that you use up your calories fast so if you only eat a couple meals a day or you don't mind eating a couple meals a day or you only want to eat like once or twice a day and you find it hard to get in enough calories then increasing some fat may be a good way for you to do that because you're going to get in more calories while eating less food so if you have a higher fat intake that's helpful for getting in the calories in less meals or in smaller meals uh if you feel like eating like you like to feel like you're eating more especially when you're dieting maybe like a just a psychological trigger for you like you don't want to have less food like you just want to kind of feel like you're eating a lot all day long then lowering fat can actually help you to have more meals because you're going to be able to just like eat more so fat makes you have to eat less because you use up the calories really fast reducing the fat helps you to spread the meals out a little bit more uh if those are the two big things that I would say is look at your taste preference, look at your calorie preference. If you enjoy having lots of meals and feeling like, oh, I'm not even really on a diet, then having a little bit lower fat could possibly help you. If you feel like, um, you know, I really, I love the taste of fat, that is my preference, and I don't like eating, you know, like I'd rather just like eat like one huge meal at dinner and maybe the, you know, like a lunch or something like that, then maybe having higher fat would help you to get in those calories and, you know, still feel full. So that's up to you. That's one of the things that I would say to look at is those two things. The most important thing to remember is your body, your rules. You make the rules here. Pay attention to what you like and don't like and use those to your advantage when you are trying to decide when and where to lower your calories. So once you've looked at those two things and you've weighed out both preferences, you can figure out if you lean heavily in one direction or the other. And if it's split right down the middle, you know, then maybe it could just pretty much come down to deciding meal by meal. You know, you can just this decide, okay, in the morning, I like, you know, to have like some fatty meats or I like to put more butter on my toast or whatever it is like that. And you can decide at that meal that it's going to be higher fat. And then you can decide at another meal that you're going to reduce the fat. And you can just kind of be strategic throughout your day if that's the way that it works out for you. If you look at it like it's down the middle. Uh, if you are paying attention, like your attention would mainly be placed just on your protein then. So if you're that person that you look and you're like, I can't decide because I like carbs and fat and I like them together, then you just eat a little bit less of both. So that means that you wouldn't necessarily drastically reduce one or the other. You would just reduce them both. 
So in the case of, so maybe if you are starting with maybe a caloric split as far as your macronutrients of 40% carbs, 30% fat, 30% protein, then maybe you would reduce your carbs and your fat uh, by maybe 5% or so, or you would make them equal. So you would do like, you would keep your protein at 30% because remember we're not touching that. And then you would just distribute things a little bit uh, differently with your carbs and fat. So you would go 35%, or, I mean 35% carbs and maybe 30, 25% fat or something like that. So you can maneuver those a little bit more. Um, you could also just, like I say, just eat less of them in equal amounts. So when you have those meals and you have your carbs and fat and you have them together, you're like, I'm gonna eat this, I'm gonna enjoy the crap out of it and I'm gonna leave just a little bit on the plate or I'm gonna get a smaller serving of it or something like that. So like for instance, if you get, uh, you like going to Starbucks and getting lattes there and you're like, I don't want to do low, I don't want to cut the fat in my milk. I don't want to like get any of those like skinny syrups or anything like that. So instead of getting a grande, I'm going to get a tall. That's one way that you would just have less. So that way it reduced your calories just because it was a smaller serving size versus having the same serving size and deciding I'm going to reduce my fat of my, by my milk. I'm going to get non-fat milk and regular syrup or vice versa. I'm going to get, you know, skinny syrup and regular milk, or you can do both. You can just feel like I'm just going to, I'm going to get that same size, but I'm going to get skinny syrup and non-fat milk, which is disgusting to me. But if that's something that you like, then go for it. I am a car girl. So for in that instance with me, I would rather have non-fat milk and full sugar syrup than have non-fat milk and skinny syrup or full fat milk and skinny syrup. Like I just, I, I'm not going to do the skinny syrup. Like I just, I want full sugar syrup. So I would just reduce my fat. In that case, that's what I would do. You may find that that's different for you because you just can't stay in the mouthfeel of a non-fat latte. So just some of the ways to make that work for you. Hopefully that helped you guys. Like I said, I'm frozen on my end, so hopefully you guys can still hear me. If you had any questions, then go ahead and post those. I just wanted to kind of give you a general idea of how to pick just two very quick ways. Look at it, think about what your taste preference is, think about what your caloric preference is. Do you like carbs and want to eat a lot of meals throughout the day? Then you're probably a lower fat person. If you are, you know, you you like carbs, okay, but you can't eat that many meals. You still need to be able to get in your carbs. Then maybe you're a higher fat person and a lower carb person because the increased fat would help you to get the calories in a little bit more. So neither one, like I say, is a magic bullet. Don't believe the hype of the fitness industry. They do want you to fall into a cult of one or the other of like eat uh, low carbs is you know queen of everything and gonna cure all of my life's ills it won't it will reduce your carbs you will lose a little bit of weight and that's that but if it's not sustainable for you because you're a carb lover then it doesn't work for you so in my case fat typically goes first so if i wanted to do nothing else and keep most of my stuff the same like if i wanted to eat exactly the way that I was, that is when I personally, this is not something that you should do or that is like EMTWL recommended, I personally allow my fat to drop as low as 23%. So usually if I'm cutting, my fat is in the like 23 to 28% territory. So usually probably around 25, but if I'm like, I need more food that day and all day long, I'm just like, I just want to munch on stuff, then I may reduce the fat a little bit more. Now, the caveat to that is that if I ate more fat, I probably wouldn't need as many meals, <laughs> but psychologically, I like to eat a lot. So it helps me to be able to, I can get in more meals throughout the day. And because it's harder for me to get in my protein with just one or two meals, I need my uh, meals to be split up a little bit more. So just one of the things that I do is I just, I focus on my protein and then if I'm looking to maneuver anything else, my protein is always around 30 to 35%. And then I'm maneuvering usually in the fat area. That's just me. 
pick which one works best for you. This is not advocating a low fat. I'm not saying do not drop your fat below that 23 to 25% range because your brain still needs fat in order to function. Your body needs fat in order to function. And yes, eating fat burns fat, but not in the way you think, which is an entirely different session, which we could talk about if you guys want to. So hopefully that kind of helped you guys to figure it out. Use those two tips and let me know how they work for you. So thank you for joining and I'll talk to you guys later. And that's a wrap. Thank you so much for joining me for another episode and make sure you keep in touch. So whether that's through DMs or email, I would love to know what you felt about this episode or if you have topics that you'd like me to cover in future episodes. You can DM me on Facebook at EM2WL or over on Instagram at eatmore number two way less or via email at info at eatmoretowayless.com. If you're completely new to the Eat More to Way Less process, you can also grab our quick start guide at eatmoretowayless.com slash start. See you next time.